Hi friends and welcome. So I'm going to say hello, but I'm also going to say goodbye because what I'm doing today is saying goodbye to this craft space that I have been using for several years to do my personal crafting and to make videos to share with you. Why am I saying goodbye? Because I'm saying hello to my new space in the basement. I'm so very excited about my new craft space in the basement and my next video will be made there. So you get to take a look at my new craft area. So what I want to do in this video is a couple of things. I want to go back through and share with you exactly how I have organized things here. One, because how I've organized my craft supplies here may work for you better in your space than the way I'm going to organize and share with you how I have things set up in the basement. So want to share these ideas with you. I also want to show you how you really can use a fairly small area and organize a lot of craft supplies. My space I use right here is basically just my craft table, the cabinet behind me, and then a couple of other little organizers that I'll show you here in just a few minutes. So I do this for a living and most of my supplies that I use on a regular basis have been right here in this little area. I do have some other supplies boxed up in the basement that I can pull out if needed, but most of what I need is right here. So if I can make a fairly small space work for what I do, I believe that you can as well. So something you're going to notice here in just a minute when I start showing pictures and talking more about how I have everything organized is things have been reversed surprise some of you i'm sure have figured this out and wondered like why is everything flipped around backwards in her videos and it just comes down to a crafter who's not really great with technology started making videos with my phone and i didn't realize they were mirrored and then after i realized that i was like well i can't flip them around now people are going to be like well why is she facing this way in one video and that way in the next so my pictures are going to be flipped around from what you see right here so it's just, it's just a little technology thing. So let's go ahead and get started and I will share with you my craft space and how I have all of my supplies organized. So let's first take a look at my craft table. This is a table that I actually inherited from someone and I have loved it. It has worked perfectly for my crafting table. It's standing height. I typically craft standing up and that works really well for me. Now on a day that I feel like sitting, I can pull up a higher stool and sit, sit on a stool so that I can rest a little bit. Let's first look at my main space that I use a lot. I have a cutting mat that I use here to protect my table. It works really well. It's nice to clean up. Uh, I am going to use a different type of mat or surface in my basement for several reasons uh, because this one gets kind of mucked up sometimes it is hard to clean get adhesive off it gets scratches on it and things doesn't look nice for my videos now in your craft room that doesn't really matter uh, but it has worked well for its purpose here to the right of my cutting mat I have my storage for all of my ink pads and my markers I love my storage. This is by Stampin' Up, made specifically for our markers and ink pads, and it works really well. I love having it close to my table. It's right here within reach. I can grab my colors. Maybe it's the wrong color. I can put that one back, grab another color, and it's all right here within reach, which is perfect. I can keep my ink pads with the coordinating colors of markers. My ink refills are on top, organized with a little color strip around them, so it's easy to find the color I need. I also have my blends alcohol markers, and I have one of the open storage cubes, which I use for my ink pads that don't fit into the regular ink pad organizers very well. So I love that this has grown with me as my collection has grown, as my marker collection has grown. I can add sections of this piece by piece to fit the needs of my collection. Now to the left side of my cutting mat, I have my paper cutter, my paper trimmer, and my essential supplies. I have my Stampin' Up! paper trimmer that I use quite a bit here. I also have my long arm paper cutter, which you can see. Now, when I started offering card classes a few years back, the long arm paper cutter quickly became essential when I was cutting large amounts of paper for lots of people to make cards and projects. I got that and I love it. So I have kept it right here beside me 
for when I'm doing large amounts of cutting. Behind my paper trimmer, I have my, an organizer here with my essentials. So things are in here, my, my stamp and pierce mat, my silicone craft sheet, my scissors, my take your pick tool, my water painters, pens and pencils. I can't remember if I said scissors, glue, blending pens, some of those basics. So I have some upright organizers, kind of like a cup that I can put my long narrow things like the scissors and the blending pens and my water painters and grab them anytime I need them. I have a few of my blocks in there. I have my brush to remove pieces from delicate die cuts, my bone folders, of course, a spritzer for cleaning stamps, just all sorts of handy essentials that I use all the time. Now I'll show you the far edge of my table. This has a little lip in it, kind of a little storage area that I love. Between my mat and my essentials, I have stored some of my blocks here. They're always handy and within reach. And then on the right side, I have some little paper scraps, my white paper scraps. If I have a small white paper scrap, I put it right there because I use white scraps all the time. So having those within reach for a greeting or a little punch has worked really well. I also have my heat tool stored in this little area at the far side of my table and I have my flexible trash trash bin that I love so much right here beside my blocks as well. Just past my table I have a little shelf that I actually have my camera holder on for when I make my videos but I do keep a couple of my supplies on there as well. I have a little organizer where I keep all of my adhesives. Some of my larger stamping blocks stay there and I also keep my blending brushes in a mug right there with some of my sponges that haven't found a home yet. Now let's look under my table because what you're going to see here is I really try to keep everything close that I use often and make sure you stick around till the end. I'm actually going to share my top five organizational tips with you at the very end. So you're definitely going to want to hear those. So right under my table, I have three totes. These came from 31 years ago and the one on the left holds my ribbons. I try to keep them organized. Sometimes they're a complete wreck. That's okay. I know that if I need ribbon, it's going to be under my table on the left side. I reach down, I grab it, I can pull it out. Don't even have to look. I know where it's at and I can pull it out really quickly. I also keep baby wipes in that tub just because they needed a spot and there was space in the ribbon tub. The tote in the middle is my embellishment tote. I have these small plastic cases that I've used to organize a lot of my embellishments. What I do before I put the embellishments inside, I put one of the embellishments on the edge so that I can see what's inside of there. That way I can pull this tub out, look at those plastic containers, see which embellishments are in which one, grab the one I need and continue creating. The tote on the right side holds my dies and my stamparatus and a few other miscellaneous things like cutting plates. So it is right there anytime I need it. My stamparatus stays in the very front because it is by far the most used tool I have in this tote. So I can reach down, grab it without even looking, pull it out and use it and sneak it back down when I'm done without even moving that tote. Now let's take a look at the drawers in my craft table. I have three doors, drawers here on the left side. The top two hold my punches. The top drawer, I keep my basic shapes of punches like circles, tags, the ones that I use all the time. The second drawer, I keep the more specialty shapes, Christmas trees and flowers and cats and things like that. I do have my punches stored on the edge because they take up less space that way and I'm able to fit all of my punches in my drawers, having them organized this way. The third drawer is going to be some of my specialty supplies that I don't use quite as often. That's why they're at the bottom. My most used punches are at the top. That's easier to open than my lesser used supplies, which are at the bottom. So what's in this drawer? My heat embossing supplies, my embossing powder, my embossing paste, 
watercolor pencils, masks, stencils, my stays on permanent ink, spritzers, my mini ink spots, my mini ink pads, just kind of an assortment of things that didn't fit anywhere else that I don't use all the time. So I've put them down there in that bottom drawer. Now let's look behind the wood door on the right side of the table. And in here, you're going to see that I have sponge storage on top, and then I have a plastic organizer with three drawers below it. So I have my sponges on the top, like I said, then what's in those three drawers underneath? The top one has an assortment of adhesives. So when I run out of adhesive, I can open that drawer and I have extras in there. So they're nice and handy. The second, the middle drawer has clear sleeves and packaging. So like clear sleeves, clear envelopes, and then also packaging materials like little treat boxes that are pre-made that I can just fold together and use. Uh, so that's my packaging drawer. The third drawer is extra stamping blocks. I do a lot of classes. I have a lot of clear blocks on hand. So that third drawer is completely full of extra blocks for when I have my classes. So that pretty much covers my table. Uh, let's look at what's around my table and then we will actually look in my craft cabinet. We'll let you peek inside and see how I have things organized in there. So to the left of my table, I keep a few things laying just against the side, like my scoring board. Sometimes my trimmer ends up down there. I have a few things like a lap desk for my laptop. It has ended up there like large flat things that don't really fit anywhere else. Just lean up against the side of my table right there. To the left of that, I have some plastic drawers that have served me well. I bought these plastic drawers when I went away to college long, long ago, and I never knew that they were going to be so handy for storing stamps inside. So let's talk about the drawers first, and then we'll talk about what is on top. So I have four drawers in this organizer, and for the most part, these keep my newer products. Now, because I do this as a business, it may be a little bit more important that I keep my newer products separate from my older products, but I think this has application with any crafter. You know, if you, how many products in your collection can you say, wow, I've never used that. I ordered that. I thought I was going to love it and I've never used it. Well, what if you have a section where you can keep your new things until you use them once or a few times and then you can merge them into the rest of your collection. That way you make sure you use those products that you've organized or ordered. So in the top drawer, I have some of my newer products like the specialty things like ribbons, dyes, embossing folders, masks, treat boxes, some of the assorted newer products. If we go into the second drawer, these are going to be all of my newer stamps. Then the third and fourth drawers are kind of overflow. Like right now I have my celebration items in this third drawer. My fourth drawer is stamps I've had for a while, but I haven't necessarily used or I haven't used them much. And I want to make sure I use them in some of my videos that I have coming up. Let's talk about what's on top of this plastic organizer. Front and center, actually it's not front and center, but it's the most obvious thing, is my storage for my scrap paper. When I found this way of organizing my scrap paper and did this a few years ago, it was seriously life-changing. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about scrap storage at the end, but what I've done, I've used a photo organizer. It has these compartments that lift out and I have organized my scraps by color. So it is so easy for me to go and pull out the color I need. It, maybe I don't have a scrap in that color. It's easy to figure that out. And when I'm done crafting for the day or for the week, whenever I decide to clean off my craft table, it's easy for me to slide my scraps in with the appropriate color. Also in this organizer with my paper scraps, I have pre-cut photo mats that are the size for card front. So four by five and a quarter. I have tons of white ones and then I also have a section for colored photo mats as well. My embossing folders also stay in the same photo organizer. 
Now, right in front of my paper scrap storage, I have one of the best things I have done also besides organizing my scraps, which is pre-cut card bases. I have all of the Stampin' Up! colors pre-cut in here. I usually cut eight or 10 of them at a time, file them in here, and then as I use them, if I run out, it's easy for me to grab more, cut eight or 10 more, put them in there, and I always have pre-cut card bases ready to go, which saves me a lot of time. Okay, let's go over here and look at the right side of my craft table. And just to the right of my table, I have a fabric bin that holds my eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Have it organized in rainbow order. I have these small tabs I got at the office supply store. I've written the colors of the cardstock on there, so it's easy for me to flip through and find the color I need and pull out one sheet or however many sheets I need. Under my table, I, I when you have a small space, you have to use all your space, right? So I keep my cut and emboss machine. It slides right under my table perfectly. So it stays down, down there when it's not in use. And when I do need it, I pull it out and up onto my table. And then also my granddaddy giant paper cutter that I use when I'm doing really big classes with a lot of people making cards. It will cut through basically books and magazines, but it stays down there whenever it is not being used. Okay, so that pretty much covers my craft table and all the things on and around it. Let's go ahead and look in my craft cabinet. This has done so much good for me. If you can have some kind of fairly large cabinet like this that you can close the doors on, so nice because you can hide if there is any mess or if it doesn't look all pretty and organized, you can just hide it. And it's been perfect since my craft space has been in the back of our living room. So the top shelf houses my extra cardstock, as you can see. I always try to keep an extra color, an extra pack of each color of cardstock, and this is where they live. On my second shelf, I have my stamps. These are not my newest stamps, but they're the rest of the stamps that we still have that are current. Now, I do have a retired stamp collection that I don't use as much, and they have been in boxes in the basement. I'm going to have a better space to keep them in my new craft area in the basement, but so far, uh, this is how I've been keeping things organized. So, it's really nice to be able to do this, to have my most used stamps right here. They're close, but then I do have some other stamps that I can find if I need them. Now, what's in front on the bottom of this area? So I have this metal organizer that has my designer paper in it. I keep it organized by sleeves. It hasn't really been super organized, but it does the job. I can flip through, I can find the pack that I need, and all my designer paper that is current, again, is right here. I have a bigger collection that has been staying somewhere else. Now on the right side, I have a 12 by 12 organizer that I've used for several things. It keeps scrapbook pages that I've made that I haven't done anything with. It has, if I have card bases that are four and a quarter by 11, the long way, or like slimline card bases, I keep them in here. If I have scraps of paper, that are really long and narrow, they stay in here. And my specialty 12 by 12 paper also fits in this organizer. To the side, to the right side of that organizer, I have some extra designer paper, my large grid paper that I can use for stamping so I don't make a mess on my workspace. And I also have some 12 by 12 sleeves that I use to protect scrapbook pages and to organize paper scraps and things. Behind my paper storage, you can see some plastic drawers, and these have served different purposes at different times. Some of them have housed treats, like I like to make little candy treat holders, and sometimes I like to keep those hidden from my family so they don't disappear. So sometimes they keep them. If I have projects in progress that I haven't finished, but I need to clear it off of my workspace, these little drawers work perfectly for that. Sometimes if I have a video that I've started to make some things for a video and I'm not quite done, I need to get it out of the way, I can put them in there. I have just odds and ends, like products I have for giveaways, uh, extra supplies like my glue gun, Velcro, googly eyes, magnets, 
clear spray paint that I use to seal certain projects like pastels or gilded leafing. Just kind of odds and ends are in these drawers. On top of the drawers, I have a few little paper pumpkin boxes. Paper pumpkin is our monthly craft kit in the mail that's so much fun. One of my paper pumpkin boxes has some of the past paper pumpkin stamps in it. The other one has some of the past die cuts and extra pieces that I maybe didn't use with my kit, and I put them in that to organize them. I also have one of my absolute favorite things that I have done. This is my pre-made tag tackle box. I made this using a certain set that we got a few years ago. It's one stamp and one die that you can stamp once, run through your die cutting machine once, and you get 19 different tags. So I used this a few times. I organized all these tags in this tackle box, and it is a lifesaver when I need a tag quickly for a project. In addition, I have my plastic box here that is for a gilded leafing that didn't really fit anywhere else, and this is where it happened to fit. On the insides of these doors, you will notice that I have magnetic sheets that I use for my die storage. This is where I keep my most used dies, and I love, love, love this. It saves so much time from having to pull out the envelope, find the envelope I want, pull my die out. It's right there. I can grab it, use it, and put it right back really quickly. The other thing I've had on the inside of these doors, which has been really handy, but it's not very exciting to look at, I just keep a post-it note that when I pull out a pack of cardstock from the top, I write down that color of cardstock that I need to reorder or anything else that I'm going to need to order. This really helps me when I go to order new products that I know what I'm out of, I know what I need to replace. Now let's take a look behind the doors at the bottom of my cabinet. And this has just been a kind of overflow in these. One of them I keep projects and progress in baskets. For whatever reason, I end up with cards that are not finished. Sometimes I end up with a lot of cards that are not finished. They stay in a basket on this top shelf right here. Underneath, I keep my 12 by 12 cardstock and a fabric tote and even more clear acrylic box I have for classes. On this other side, I just have odds and ends, some totes, some extra adhesives, whatever I don't have space for anywhere else. So that, my friends, is my craft storage area. Now, don't go anywhere because I want to share my top organization tips with you. So here they are, my top five tips for organizing in your craft area. Number one, do not keep products you are not using. You do not need to own all of the craft supplies. Get rid of the ones you're not using and it's going to make your life better and you'll have more space for the things you are using. Number two, you need the right equipment. You need organizers to be able to organize. You don't have to spend a lot of money. You can find a lot of things at the dollar store, but you need containers and organizing to, organizers to organize your supplies. Number three, keep card bases pre-cut and ready in your craft area and tags. My little tag box that I told you about, I love, love, love it. It saves so much time. Number four is to figure out scrap paper storage that works for you. I hear from so many of you that your paper scraps are a complete wreck. And I get it. I, mine used to be as well. So figure out some scrap paper storage that works for you to clear off that table so you can use it. And tip number five is keep all the supplies that you use often within reach. They have to be within reach. Keep the important things close. You can move the other things off a little bit farther away. So thanks so much for watching along. I hope this gives you some ideas that can really help you to organize your craft area. Now, I hope you'll subscribe if you're new here because you are going to want to see my new craft area. It's going to be so exciting once I get it all organized and I will make sure to do a big craft room tour once I do get completely set up and organized. Hope you have a wonderful day. I'm so glad you're here following along with the things I share. Hope you have a blessed day and I hope you'll be back again next time when I'll be here helping you to hand make with love.